Rebels. So, welcome back to my channel. My name is Masako Motsuka. You guys are watching Fun Double East, which is Randoms with Shades, and I'm more I'm Shades the Rebels. So, in today's video, I just wanted to spoil you guys. <laughs> yes, I wanted to spoil you guys. Sometimes I do that because I feel like it. Anyway, oh, these gloves. Are you talking about these gloves? Oh, these look darling. I made them myself and guess what I didn't even use a machine so in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to do exactly that how to make these gloves without having a machine you don't have to be a fashion designer you don't have to have a machine you don't even have to use a thread and a needle ask me how just continue watching this video all right all righty so let's get into the video so guys I just want to disclaim this that when my voice gets a bit cranky it's because I'm a bit fluish so yeah I apologize for that um, but if you know me guys I always emphasize that you need to hydrate and moisturize okay hydrate and moisturize so go take that sip of water before continuing watching this video and hydrate I mean moisturize your hands so yeah these temperatures are not good for us guys dry skin is a real thing so we're trying to avoid that this winter okay and then the next thing I do to lock in that moisturizer is oil my skin, but also just to heat myself up. I use, I'm using um, a Vaseline right now, but I usually use coconut oil, but I ran out, of course. Um, and yeah, when you start rubbing your hands, the oil heats up and you start heating up your hands. Okay, not for that long, but it, it, it does something. And then I have this bean bag that I just hold in the microwave for a minute to help, my, help me keep warm because <laughs> cold fingers do not work that's it cold feelings do not work you want to keep them warm okay what we need for this video is a piece of paper a pencil a marker paper scissors a ruler measuring tape fabric scissors fab how to make the pattern and then cutting and then making okay good so we're gonna be tracing our hand you want to put your hand your paper in a portrait position and you want to give yourself enough room from the edge of the paper to where you would be tracing your hand right about two centimeters that should be fine and open up your fingers when you're tracing because you want to trace your finger your hand really well sorry and then i mark my wrist where my wrist is this is just um my starting point and then i'm going to straighten that line because that line is actually going to help us a little later Alrighty then, I align my hand back into that position and start tracing. When it comes to tracing, you want to hold your pencil or whatever you're using to trace in an upright position because you want to really get an accurate measurement of your hand, you know. So now what we're going to do is add seam allowance and seam allowance is the edge between, the space between the edge of the fabric and where you're going to be stitching that pattern. Uh, in this case, we're going to be gluing and I'm going to give myself a 0 0.5 because I will be using a very stretchy fabric Lycra my favorite. It is a four-way stretch fabric And so you don't really need that much seam allowance because it stretches and trust me guys. It's very comfortable So as you can see I'm measuring all around and then I join the dots decided to actually darken this with my marker because it wasn't that clear for you guys and I just wanted you guys to be able to see what, I, what is going on so there we have it as you can see between your fingers there that seam allowance is quite big it's bigger than 0 0.5 and it's gonna be very uncomfortable between your fingers when you're wearing that glove with that much of fabric okay so what you want to do because there's going to be too much fabric there you want to actually cut it to the right seam allowance which was 0 0.5 right but we're not going to do that on this pattern we're going to do it on the fabric and so to be able to remind us that that is something that we need to do i'm going to be using these dots and over there by my thumb we don't need um that dot because you you don't close and open your thumb like that it's going to be comfortable okay the seam allowance there is fun so yeah so back to that line that we drew earlier on we're going to draw a perpendicular line from the top of that finger index finger to the bottom of the hand 
and it has to be 90 degrees to qualify as something that is perpendicular you can use a protector if you want to there are also other methods like measuring one centimeter out one centimeter in you know for the origin whatever so yeah so that line is called a grain line and i just drew those arrows and that is a symbol that it is a green line so this is just information that you're putting onto this pattern because you might want to use this later I keep my patterns so I would advise that you do the same alrighty so now this is the complete pattern with the seam allowance it is called a master pattern so I'm going to name it glove master pattern but I want to go the extra mile and name it you know master half but I'm gonna be <laughs> giving it an acronym is it an acronym or abbreviation i think acronym yeah so msgo standing it means massacre i should have wrote this on the hand itself because this is information i'm going to need later right but remember now we have two hands and we have a top and a bottom for each hand and this pattern is only for one either the top or the hand and so that means we need two for each okay so 2 times 2 is equals to 4 and therefore I'm going to write on the pattern cut times 4 because like I said you need as much information because you're going to keep this and you're going to want to use it later. So you need to know what you should do with it, right? Yes. So 2 for the right hand side RHS and 2 for the left hand side LHS and then just cut it up. So now here is our final pattern and I just want to give you guys a demonstration. So this, imagine this is a fabric. This is a piece of fabric or whatever. Okay. With every fabric, fabrics are woven and they are woven with yarns and each weave is different. But anyway, so the horizontal yarns are called warps and the vertical yarns are called widths. The horizontal um, yarns allow for stretch in the fabric. Okay, some stretch and it doesn't have to be an extreme stretch but it is stretch and then the vertical which are the widths um, are rigid and steady and allow for stability in the fabric so right now I'm coloring the edge of this fabric right so remember we drew a grain line on our pattern that grain line is supposed to be parallel to this salvage so that yellow line is called the salvage at the edge um, rigid part of the fabric, right? So as you can see right now, I am measuring the distance between the salvage and the grain line. And this is how you're supposed to place patterns on your fabric, okay? So that it sits well. Do you guys get what I'm saying? All right. So then after doing that, I start tracing and I realized that the chalk was a bit too light. I mean, it was yellow on white, so and you guys probably couldn't see it. So I don't advise that you guys use a cookie to trace because it might spoil the fabric. All right. So don't use a cookie. Stick to chalk or something that can move. You don't want to ruin your fabric. Okay. And right now I'm pinning because I folded my fabric so that I can cut two pieces at the same time and you want to make sure that even when you're folding the distance between the fold and the salvage is equal it's parallel so that everything is aligned and proper when I'm tracing the other side I flipped the pattern and now I'm just transferring all the information that I need which was the grain line as well as those three dots now I'm pinning in the dots. You don't want to mark these dots onto the fabric. No, no, no. You're going to be ruining your fabric. So you just pin them on like I am there. And then as you can see, I pull out the pin just a little bit, but not out of the fabric. Out of the paper, but not out of the fabric. And then I just pull it out um, where I started pinning it in on the paper. Do you guys get what I'm saying? So that the pin stays on the exact same position on the fabric like it was on the pattern do you guys get what i'm saying because we don't want to ruin our fabric anyway so now i am cutting and as you can see as i get to that point there i'm sorry i didn't get closer but i am going to stop at 0.5 i'm eyeballing that 0.5 i would advise that you use you use a measuring tape for this 
so like you can as you can see you guys I'm cutting and making sure that everything is flat on my surface okay you don't want to be taking it up and down because you could actually lose that shape of the fabric I mean of the of the pattern so now I have my four pieces that I've cut out as you can see smoothly cut okay you want to make sure you cut everything properly and now I'm going to um, place my fabrics right side to right side the right side being the side with the pattern and the wrong side being the side that doesn't have the pattern and that is how I'm going to stick my fabrics together using this glue first time using it so yeah guys I must say I'm really proud and I'm like maybe I should do more projects with this glue because yeah it makes my job so easy yeah okay so it says you must allow this um glue to dry for seven days so you need to make sure whatever glue that you're gonna buy you read the instructions i really tried to be generous with the glue because it was my first time um using it and i was like what if it doesn't stick if i use too little so might as well just use a lot and then we you make sure that you place everything properly i'm placing the fabric on top of each other and as you can see you don't want to go um, when applying the glue you don't want to apply more than 0.5 centimeters so you're pretty much eyeballing this but if you wanted to you could use a measuring tape but I wouldn't really advise it because the tip of the glue is quite skinny okay so we're done guys and here are the gloves okay I really tried to make them really look cool but they are white and you know I don't, hey guys I, I really didn't know how I was supposed to show you guys gloves <laughs> but anyway I used the lycra which is a four-way stretch fabric so as you can see they are tight right now but it is a comfortable tight it's like wearing a swimming costume because remember lycra is a fabric that is used for swimming costumes mostly if you want to use a different fabric i would advise that you give yourself a little bit more um, seam allowance so up to at least maybe 1.5 centimeters that should be fine but if it's something stretchy about 0.5 to 1 centimeter it should be also great fantastic so yeah guys i really hope that you guys enjoy this video i hope that you enjoy these gloves <laughs> they're really nice they were really nice it was fun to make this it was quick and i'll tell you guys the review a couple of weeks from now because uh well let's just say i want to give you guys the review with the socks yeah let me just say that <laughs> And just like that guys, we have our own gloves. How fantastic is it? Tell me I don't got you. If tell me I don't got you because you would be lying. You are lying to yourself. <laughs> anyway, so this was a cost effective um, project that I did. All you need is fabric glue, literally. That's all you need. Because I know we all have old clothes that we don't wear anymore. So you wouldn't have to buy fabric. But all you would have to buy is the fabric glue, which I bought for only 30 rand at a shop in Marabasta, which is in town Pretoria. So you can go to your nearest fabric shop and you will probably find it there. You should be able to find it there. And yeah, guys, that's literally it. And you have your old t-shirt, cut it up, and done. Done, honey. So yeah, this is also a fun activity that you guys can do with your younger siblings, your children, just the family in general because we've kind of like we've kind of run out like run out of <laughs> activities to do during this lockdown and yeah so this is something you can add to your activities list if you were feeling kind of bored and also you're keeping yourself warm so until next time if you did like this video please don't forget to like it if you want to say something add your two cents don't forget to comment down there and yeah thank you guys